and today we were receiving uh, a number of artifacts that had been taken uh, out of Uganda in the early 1800s and uh, the late 1900s. These were taken by the colonialists then. Uh, uh, these are specifically from the UK. There are quite so many uh, uh, around the UK, but this is the beginning of repatriating some of these. And this process began some time back. So today we are receiving around uh, uh, 39, 39 artifacts from the University of Cambridge with a bigger team. Uh, today is a symbolic receiving, but I think two, three days from now, we'll also do another function uh, where we'll officially unveil, unpack, and also do another receiving for, for, for this. The five human remains are the Balongo that were pick, picked from Wamara tombs. And if you heard the minister mentioned that these special objects that came from Wamara tombs or from Buganda Kingdom, we have a plan to again take them back where they were picked from. But because they have been away, the Balongo or the twin uh, sacred objects are, are sacred and you just don't handle them anyhow. And so, of course, uh, Roscoe then took them and so the, the people at all the custodians of these uh, sacred objects right now cannot just receive them before the rituals are done, before they are acclimatized, before they are sure. Yeah, all these objects were acquired in the early, 19, early 1900s, 1910s, 1920s. They reflect the power that collectors had over African peoples and African lives, bringing them back is a way that ourselves as curators and as scholars can honor, can make these people live again, can bring their lives and their concerns back into focus 120 years later to allow us here in East Africa to experience what was lost and what might possibly be recovered through the work that museums can do. But of course we are grateful to the British government uh, and the government of Uganda, especially the ministry under the museum department, for putting this together because this has not been easy. This people have been holding on to these artifacts for over 100 years. And, and some uh, belong to the Buganda Kingdom, we'll even be handing them over to them, and another that belong to the various cultural places that they were gotten from across the country. So we are glad to be receiving this today, and hopefully Ugandans will see what this represents historically, and therefore we can go ahead to use them and view them so that they can be a part of the Ugandan uh, cultural history and heritage going forward. So, so, so we are glad going forward today. Uh, well, I think, first of all, it's a, it's a global phenomenon now. A number of African countries have been uh, asserting this on a number of colonial regimes to make sure that these are returned. So they've opened a number of, of, of other African countries, including Ghana. But among us all the countries that have received, Uganda has been the first to receive the biggest consignment of 39 in a go. So, but there are around three other African countries that have gotten some of the artifacts. So going forward, like I said, this is the beginning. We have more than 39 across just Britain alone and across Europe. So I believe that the negotiations will go on to receive even more artifacts that are held uh, within Britain. So, so, so we are happy that uh, this is the beginning. But the pressure has been there. Negotiations have been on uh, with the Ugandan government, I think working with the, uh, uh, some universities in, in the US to make sure that we've reached uh, at this stage. We are working in conjunction with uh, a number of foundations, including Mellon Foundation, that has helped us get here. But still, uh, 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 what we're happy about is we have the things here. And we would have done anything, even without any other support, as government to make sure we got here. But we had partners that helped us in getting this thing. Of course, this is uh, very big for us. Like I've told you, these are things we've not had for over 100 years. And they were so important. That's why the colonialists managed to get them from Uganda and fly them to the UK. So, 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 so this is history that we've not kept for these 100 years. We're happy to have it now. It is well preserved and that we are going to show the Ugandans really what had been taken from us. So this is of great importance to the ministry, but also to the museum's department, because we are going to store them, display them, and add them as part of the products Ugandans can view. There is no condition whatsoever. We've received these and we are going to keep them. They are ours going forward. So, so, th so there is no repatriation of, of, uh, of these artifacts. I can say that today is uh, a big day in Uganda's history and uh, we, as the Ministry of Tourism, and specifically the Department of Museums and Monuments, 
together with the University of Michigan, uh, began a project in 2018. And uh, we started with re rethinking the Uganda Museum. And then with, as we continued to dialogue and discuss how best we can reposition the Uganda Museum, we, we got an idea of repatriating the objects. And with the help of the uh, University of Michigan, we, I have a representative here, Professor Dedick. We started by having several ex exhibitions. Most of you have documented, especially UBC, have documented these exhibitions. We had one in 2019. We had one in 2022, and all these were geared to having bigger things. Bigger things is repatriating objects, and we are able to, to showcase them and be appreciated by the public or by Ugandans. And so this process specifically began in 2019, and then in 2022, because we had a COVID period that delayed the process. In 2022, with the help of the Mellon Foundation, we had a team from Uganda Museum visit the University of Cambridge to go and see the best objects. Because the objects that are in Cambridge, some of them are archaeological, some of them are ethnographic. What has been returned are the ethnographic objects that include, when I say ethnographic, these are those that include the daily life, you know, what we used in our daily life. So uh, basically what we have returned are the ethnographic, but among them are five human remains. The five human remains are the Balongo that were pick, picked from Wamara tombs, and if you had the minister mentioned that these special objects that came from Wamara tombs or from Buganda Kingdom, we have a plan to again take them back where they were picked from. But because they have been away, the Balongo or the twin are sacred objects, are, are sacred, and you just don't handle them anyhow. And so, of course, uh, Rosco then took them. And so the, the people at all the custodians of these uh, sacred objects right now cannot just receive them before the rituals are done, before they are acclimatized, before they are sure, you know, uh, before they are sure that really they should go back even to where they are supposed to be. So those are the five objects that are going back to Buganda. But the rest of the objects, some of them come from Buganda, others come from Ankore, others from Lango, you know. So they are actually Ugandan objects. And so those ones, they will be at the main repository, which is the Uganda Museum, a repository of all the Ugandan objects. and. We shall showcase them, the minister has mentioned, that we shall have them be viewed by the public for about two to three days. Because from here, we are going to leave them. We can't, we would have opened them today, but we have to leave them to first acclimatize, be first, you know, from the, you know, the cold, you know, to this kind of temperature. We have to first leave them stabilize. The, after that, we shall be able to open them from Monday and Tuesday, and then the public can see them on Wednesday. That's why now at the Uganda Museum on Wednesday at 11.30, we should be able to have all of you at the Uganda Museum, and we celebrate the return of these artifacts.